Good evening, everybody, um, and welcome to our last um, session for leaders and managers in 2020. It has been an unprecedented year. None of us could have anticipated what will happen, uh, but it has given us an opportunity to rethink how we communicate with all our colleagues and how to support you. And in view of the new EYFS, and in view of the fact that we no longer have to track children's development for Ofsted records, we thought it might be interesting to look at the learning stories from New Zealand and see how our New Zealand colleagues have managed to record children's learning and how they share and celebrate the learning, not only with the parents, but also with the children. This is such a gift to many children in New Zealand that we have heard of a situation where the learning story from nursery was presented at somebody's wedding. Obviously, a document which the person herself was very proud of and the family was proud to share. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could start a revolution in England where people would, instead of writing um, tracking observations and looking at development matters if they were really able to celebrate children's learning according to how it is done in New Zealand. Of course, it requires my change in mindset. It requires us thinking about children in a different way. But at the same time, it is very much in keeping with Montessori's idea of letting the child have a voice. We are absolutely delighted to have Antonella Cirillo and Amanda, Anna Maria Gill to share the learning stories, their background and their structure with us. And I hope that there will be also an opportunity for all of you to be able to sit back and reflect about what it means to you. And we are very privileged to have a reflection of a colleague who works with, Montessori, with Michelle Wisby in her nursery, who has used learning stories in New Zealand, and she has implemented them in the nursery in Essex. So we will have the theory, we will have the aspiration, and we will have some of the practice. So welcome again, and I hand over to Antonella and Anna Maria. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Barbara, we are going to uh, start uh, giving a sort of introduction to what is the, the background to learning stories and also trying to see from the beginning uh, that we have uh, um, important uh, parallels and uh, communalities uh, with uh, that uh, um, uh, curriculum for the early years. Um, this is uh, because we are sharing the same um, principles uh, um, in uh, education for the early years. And we have the child at the center of our pedagogy. Um, so just to um, really reminding us uh, of the, uh, that um, learning stories uh, are stories. Uh, so they are narratives and um, 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 several studies have looked at how uh, we form our, our identity through narratives of ourselves and how we negotiate uh, these uh, stories uh, with others uh, so that we form, uh, construct uh, our personal self and our social self. And in the idea that we share and negotiate these stories, so there is also the important idea of dialogue. Um, because uh, it, it is uh, through this continuous dialogue that we have uh, with others. Uh, and in the case uh, of the um, learning stories uh, that the teachers, uh, children uh, and families uh, have uh, that uh, the child can uh, um, build and form a very strong sense of self uh, as um, um, ready uh, to learn uh, in, for a lifelong learning. Um, so first of all, just to have a, a brief uh, look at the principles uh, and uh, uh, the strengths uh, of the Tefariki that uh, 
um, as I know that you all know, it means a, a mat um, in Maori. And um, uh, so on the four principles, uh, then uh, based uh, on the aspirations uh, for what uh, the um, earlier curriculum in New Zealand wanted to um, offer to children, we, um, we then we see that the strengths and uh, all of the um, um, goals that uh, are related to that, to those. So the four principles are um, relationship, because uh, it's uh, um, so important to uh, keep in mind that children learn through uh, reciprocal relationships with people, but also with um, uh, places, uh, with things uh, with which uh, they interact. The idea of holistic development that uh, um, really um, needs to be reflected in the early childhood curriculum. Um, the uh, principle of uh, um, family and community that are an integral part of the uh, early year curriculum and because they take a really an active part, a central part to children's development. And the important uh, um, then principles of empowerment so that the curriculum really empowers children to learn and to grow. Um, empowerment is a, a very strong uh, uh, principle in the Maori uh, culture and tradition. And that is uh, just the one point that can remind us of how important uh, it is, uh, the uh, bicultural and bilingual um, structure and uh, um, really essence of this uh, curriculum in New Zealand. Um, they are um woven these principles with the five strands and they form the first base and mat on which the child can stand really empowered in um, growing and learning and in uh, contributing to uh, the community um, and the strengths are those of well-being, both physical and emotional, um, the strength of belonging so that the child but also the family feels a sense of belonging, um, the uh, contribution, so the importance of offering an environment where all uh, children have uh, um, um, equitable opportunities uh, of uh, uh, learning um, and, uh, um, and they can affirm really um, their th through their thinking and, uh, as individuals. Um, communication, so the development uh, that children uh, um, achieve in uh, using what we know as 100 languages. Um, in line with a, a radio um, approach. Really all the modes of representing their uh, thinking, the way they connect the idea, their uh, feelings uh, and, uh, um, and how they can communicate this with, uh, with others. And uh, the last one that is exploration. So um, the awareness that children learn through exploration um, active uh, engagement with the environment uh, um, so that their play is valued, um, is um, um, meaningful learning and, uh, um, and all the opportunities are offered and recognized for children to, uh, for their exploration, their thinking, their reasoning, their problem solving, making sense of the world um, around them. Um, very, this is, I know that is the brief, but um, links uh, with uh, the framework that is uh, um, familiar to us um, the, of the EUIFS with the four principles. We have the unique child that develops holistically um, and uh, uh, unique, each child is unique, but also uh, the um, awareness that uh, um, 
every child, uh, the childhood uh, is unique. It's not just uh, um, I'm waiting to become a grown up or I'm getting ready to become a grown up, but uh, it has this uh, value and uh, um, is uh, respected as uh, uh, for this uh, uniqueness. And the importance of positive relationships with adults uh, in the family, in the setting, in the community, and uh, the importance of environments uh, that are rich uh, and they are favorable and that facilitate and promote uh, the engagement of children and the sense that they are secure, they can get involved uh, and they can take risk. Uh, that is fundamental for their thinking. And uh, the last one, uh, the uniqueness uh, of each child. Uh, um, and uh, um, how each child develops uh, in um, their own way. And uh, we know that uh, the characteristics of effective learning as uh, playing and exploring, the active learning, the creative thinking, um, and uh, the critical thinking um, need to be there so that the, um, we have uh, an effective uh, experience uh, through an effective process of teaching and learning. Um, without going uh, into this in detail, we don't, of course, uh, we don't need to. That is what we are used to. Um, for the holistic development, uh, the identification of the different areas, uh, prime areas, uh, specific areas, uh, but uh, really with the um, um, engagement and motivation and opportunity for thinking for children that are woven into all of these uh, areas uh, of developing and learning. I wanted just to, to um, really um, have a quick look at uh, also the idea of learning dispositions uh, because um, uh, an important uh, um, aim of the learning stories uh, is really to um, recognize, to show and support uh, learning dispositions um, that uh, they are very much linked uh, also to uh, the um, characteristics of effective learning. And uh, this slide uh, um, shows uh, how uh, from skills and knowledge um, that uh, um, we can uh, develop and children can develop and refine. Um, when there is uh, the intent, uh, so there is uh, the, um, the will, the having a purpose uh, is added to this. That's, uh, that is when we look at learning strategies. So um, um, really how children learn to learn in a way, um, skills that can be learned because we can learn how to learn. Um, and so when the learning strategies are really recognized as situated in an environment where there are partners, um, adults, children, there are tools, there are resources, there are cultural um, bank of knowledge, when everything is uh, put together then is when we have a situated learning strategies. They can't uh, uh, be um, expressed um, in a vacuum, but they are always uh, in, a, um, in a real situation uh, that the child uh, lives and uh, experiences. And when we add to this uh, motivation, then we, um, we can understand uh, the complexity of uh, the, uh, what uh, learning dispositions are. Really bringing all together these uh, different layers, uh, like a nested, uh, um, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, Russian dolls, uh, almost. Uh, that, and we see uh, that uh, the learner is uh, ready, willing, and able to learn. And that is what we um, very much need to um, nurture and uh, support uh, for, for children. Uh, being ready means to have the inclination to uh, see what is possible there and how can I can engage. Being willing is uh, to, um, to really uh, feel and, and be sensitive to the space, to the time when it's possible to 
um, engage and being interested and, and then able to add the skills and the knowledge that can be applied and can be used. So we are really looking at knowledge, skills, um, working theories of um, that children develop and how they can use their knowledge, their previous um, understanding, their skills in the new situations. So learning how to use this in um, to make sense of new experiences and take on new challenges. And uh, in fact, the, the, um, uh, the skills that are um, there necessary to, for those. These are the five domains, uh, how we can recognize, uh, how can we um, be able to look for somehow and, uh, and then to see them when we, uh, we see expressions of these learning dispositions. And uh, um, the five domains of learning dispositions are really the uh, um, inclination and the sensitivity to the uh, situation, to take an interest um, and to be involved. And that means uh, also to be, uh, to see others uh, interested and interesting in what we do um, and uh, be involved uh, is also uh, just having a sense of ourselves and with children having a sense of being someone who gets uh, involved. And, uh, and because he's involved, he's uh, taking possible uh, risks, um, he's uh, fully engaged, is uh, also able to um, persist uh, with possible difficulties and with uncertainties. Um, I like this because it has to do with uh, uh, taking risks uh, in um, making hypotheses, in trying out uh, things. It's not only about uh, uh, the physical risk of climbing a little um, higher. Um, and, um, and also to stay with what uh, is uncertain without uh, knowing that uh, um, there is uh, the ability and all the knowledge that is necessary for um, uh, uh, continuing to be uh, to work and to make sense um, and um, and then there is uh, the um, communication with others uh, using all the different uh, um, modes of representing what uh, the child is doing or what we are doing and uh, and then taking responsibility um, so taking responsibilities uh, for the um, choices uh, that, that the child uh, um, makes, uh, um, the way um, decides uh, to work through um, something, a task, a goal that uh, has uh, in, in, uh, in his mind, um, um, taking responsibility for um, um, trying to realize something uh, that is uh, just uh, in their mind and, and uh, try out uh, all the uh, skills and taking the responsibilities uh, also um, uh, for others and towards uh, others uh, in, in this mutual respect. So that of course it happens uh, through this engagement, but then it has uh, all these ripples uh, of uh, um, uh, taking responsibility as a citizen. And uh, um, um, so that goes beyond uh, the, uh, the, the setting, it goes beyond uh, the activity where the child is engaged, uh, but it is uh, really um, um, expressed uh, and exercised uh, in the uh, community. So um, I wanted to share just uh, this, but only few of these eight principles of effective early years assessment. Uh, um, this comes uh, from um, Ian Dubiel, um book on uh, effective assessment uh, in the early years uh, foundation stage. And uh, um, I think that uh, um, I just, well, there are all important, but I, I would like just to touch on the first one that is uh, um, uh, that the uh, assessment uh, in order to be uh, effective need to be accurate and authentic. And uh, um, accurate is uh, because it's based on um, observations um, and uh, uh, 
um, repeated observations. So they're those observations that the practitioners that keep on uh, doing all the time through the, uh, the day, not the formally recorded uh, that take ages to write down, uh, but it's really is, uh, um, is this accurate recording. But they're also authentic. And uh, in order to have this uh, um, authentic and accurate assessment, that means that that needs to be to involve everybody that is uh, um, uh, central to the um, uh, to the assessment. And so, all adults that know ch the child need to be um, able to contribute uh, to this uh, assessment. So that means. Uh, the, t the teachers, uh, the other colleagues in the setting, it means the parents, uh, the extended family, and the child uh, uh, himself or herself. Um, so that uh, um, it is uh, really the kind of shared and uh, um, three-dimensional, 3D picture of, uh, of the child. And uh, um, this uh, um, quality or this principle is really central to um, learning stories. Um, so that is uh, what I would like for now to um, touch on. Um, and so thinking about uh, learning stories uh, as assessment uh, and especially formative assessment, uh, they are really part uh, of the whole process of teaching and learning. They are not uh, uh, the observation left uh, in the office, uh, but uh, based uh, on the understanding of how children develop and learn, um, the, um, if the assessment is really what is there to see, uh, that can be noticed. Uh, and uh, if it is uh, about uh, how best uh, we can understand uh, what we see, so that then we can uh, um, put our understanding uh, to good use. Uh, to, it is, uh, is really what uh, we, uh, we see in the learning stories. If you look at the definition of um, what is assessment, uh, at the very top, all this comes from Mary Jane Drummond that has written a book on assessment. Um, um, defin defined simply, assessment is a practitioner's and knowing the children that they work with, understanding their learning and being able to link this with the next step in progression and development. And this is a really based on the principles of our pedagogy, um, knowing how children learn and develop um, so that we can uh, then um, understand uh, what we see because we know that particular child, but also in light of what everything that we know, our professional knowledge um, of how children develop and learn. And then that informs uh, um, uh, what we can, how we do we understand this uh, and in order to see possible lines of development, uh, uh, possible progression. I think uh, that I might, uh, yes, uh, I leave uh, uh, this uh, to Anna Maria now to look uh, more in depth uh, in learning uh, uh, stories. Uh, thank you very much, Antonella. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for uh, painting such a fantastic context and background to the learning stories and how they have come about. So the learning stories were <clears throat> developed to enhance children's sense of themselves as capable and able learners, which was very important um, to mirror a curriculum that was so very uh, deeply rooted in culture, a social cultural aspect. It also reflects a holistic way children learn, children learn. It also encourages a reciprocal relationship between the child and the environment and uh, family, and as it involves the parents, as Antonella has said already. So why, why the story? Uh, stories, because stories can evolve, 
stories can be um, constructed together. And that is the beauty of the learning, one of the beauties of the learning stories, I would say. So when you look at this spiral, um, this green spiral, um, the first three parts of it, noticing, recognizing, and responding, we do anyway. So we notice when a child is going to do something, um, recognizing the activity and responding to the child's will. Um, then we are going to record. Now we are going to record that as a, as a narrative observation. And however, with the narrative observation, we are also can take, we can also take videos or pictures, photographs, and and enhance this narrative observation. However, as I say, it's still just a narrative. What makes it into a learning story is that we then add our own perspective and we reflect on the learning. We, re we reflect on the child's learning and we re reflect on our own learning, which was very new to me when I did this in my child minding because I don't ever remember putting my own kind of learning back then, years and years and years ago, or my own honest reflections into any observations, really. So revisiting is uh, revisiting and reviewing is very important because um, when a child revisits the learning stories, their own learning story, there's a, a really, really valuable um, uh, knowledge building in revisiting that we've done before. So for example, um, there's a very, very nice example to this where, the, where a child makes a slipper for his mom and the mom receives this pair of slippers and they are wonderful. But then, of course, this is evidence. Of course, this is uh, documented. And then later on, the child can look back at this and say, oh, I've made those slippers for my mom. Now I'm going to make slippers for someone else, or I can make them better, or I can use different materials. So it's a motivation to be able to revisit and review. And also, and this is why all the learning stories need to be always accessible for the children in the classroom. And so you can see that this is not going to be an observation that you write and then you send home and then you forget about it. Um, it has different dimensions and as Montessorians I think we are quite familiar with dimensions so <laughs> there are five dimensions here and that that they are agency breath continuity distribution and emotion agency is important because we want to hear the child child's voice <clears throat> and we, we would like to make sure that we record and and evidence the child's um, agency in a way when they try something for the first time, they play with someone for the first time, they solve a problem for themselves. It's very, very important. The breath, the dimension of breath means that it is um, um, expanded to, so the learning is expanded to different uh, learning modes. So there, you know, there could be reading, there could be theater, it could be drama, all sorts of things. Also connecting with the community. Continu continuities is that what I have mentioned before that children can go back. When I was doing this in my child minding, I looked after babies, and so I found that I could really do little snippets of learning stories and these little snippets of learning stories then made a nice big story and I think it's very important not to rush or try to think I need to finish this today or you need to finish this today because a story evolves and and that is why also distribution is so important because it could go to other to other um, learning domains as I said before, to learn, to use different um, techniques or different materials. And the motions, uh, this, is an, this is an interesting one because, of course, emotions 
we record children's emotions. They may be proud of themselves. They may have concentrated that makes them happy. Um, but also, the emotions here show that when you record and you reflect as a practitioner, the learning uh, stories also construct you yourself as a teacher because you will put it, I'm very enthusiastic or I'm very happy or I'm very excited about this. And of course, when we share these with the parents and the grandparents, they are going to come back with their emotions. So the whole learning story encompasses all these different dimensions and different opinions and different feelings. Uh, in in just one so to say observation so i've put one up here it could look it doesn't need to look like this it could be handwritten it could be um more it, it could have more pictures it could be a video that you make a little um description for but of course there are always uh practical considerations um you need to know the child very well and your curriculum very well. Otherwise, you won't be able to reflect properly. Um, when you write this a story, I and I found this I found this very hard when I started, is that I had to write directly to the child. So you have taught me this, you showed me this, not saying Johnny did this and this. Uh, it sounds very easy but um you know when you start you have to kind of reprogram your brain a little bit um need to remember to ch to include the child's voice because we want this to be authentic and and when we when we write a story we always want to focus on what the child can do not what the child needs to learn to do and that's why the learning stories are so beautiful because you can actually uh, learn so much about the children's strengths and interests and fashion and fashion um it's quite a good idea to take lots of pictures during the day and then put them together at the end when you kind of have a story for yourself and i think i left time for the last one here because time is absolutely crucial to to have a lot of in terms of thinking about the story and thinking about the child's experiences. So I would say that you need to kind of slow down and be present in the child's presence and wonder with the child. And then the story is going to be magic because you will see the magic in the child. And that's how it's going to be beautifully authentic. Now, sharing the learning stories is absolutely crucial. There are some children here who are sharing their own stories with their friends and as we heard someone shared a learning story in their own wedding I mean that's just amazing uh, they are very very special so I think um, it's very important again to have this the five dimensions to each story we share them with the parents the parents then add their own take on it and their own emotions and their own um, observations and that's how it is going to become a whole uh, beautiful story so to me the learning stories are all about connections and relationships between the child and the practitioner and the family and the environment and through the stories you can you can evidence There's one more thing I would like to mention is the child's, uh, the child's questions, which um, Kat's come up with. Uh, there was a project they were thinking, how could we um, assess quality? And they come up uh, with this idea to assess quality in a provision through the, child, through the child's eye, which um, I really, really love because I, also, I'm also an advocate of listening to children and to me when I'm thinking of these um, uh, questions especially when I was working with the infants I was thinking do I let do I do, do I know them can they trust me and this was a really really honest self-reflection for me as a person as a practitioner 
and of course a reflection of, of quality of the of the provision. And um, I leave this here because um, it is, you know, as Montessorians, we also think about following the child and trusting the child. And I think the learning stories as we as as they come as they become stories and the children show us where to go next, how to how to uh, plan ahead, um, we can actually see that their decision is always much better than ours, or mine was anyway. And so I think it's very important to see the world and to see the learning through the children's eyes. So do you know me? Can I trust you? Do you let me fly? Do you hear me? And is this place fair for us? They are all connected to the strand of the Teferiti, and that's why um, they are still using them as uh, quality assessment in the setting. So <clears throat> I'm very sorry that my connection may be not very good, but we have come to this the end to the end of this part, and I'm going to hand over to Antonella now. Um, this is the very last slide of the presentation before the uh, your reflection. Um, uh, maybe you've seen in um, the blog the quote about uh, Montessori uh, writing uh, the of the importance of the observations. And uh, um, she writes, as we observe children, we see the vitality of their spirit, the effort, the intuition, attention and focus they bring to all life events. This is what we see. And then we can understand that. Um, if we think about learning dispositions uh, and how through the le learning stories we want to really to foster and to nurture the learning dispositions. I like uh, this uh, uh, writing uh, from the uh, 1946 uh, uh, London lectures uh, uh, because Montessori writes uh, we must always uh, give encouragement encouragement uh, because he's a direct help to the forces of life. Uh, this is what we do. We can give help in the environment. Uh, we can influence uh, the child's emotions. Uh, we can give him courage. Uh, we can be careful not to curtail his effort uh, and diminish uh, his enthusiasm. So I would uh, somehow go back to this uh, idea of uh, full, deeper respect uh, for the child, uh, valuing uh, all the contributions uh, and um, uh, the idea of empowering the child, um, like uh, Barbara was uh, um, summarizing before. And uh, for me, it's, uh, it's beautiful, this uh, um, little thought <laughs> from Montessori. Thank you very much, um, Antonella and Anna Maria, for this um whistle tour through Teferiki and the learning stories. I hope that our participants have um, received some inspiration from this work. I absolutely love the questions that Anna Maria posed for us um, when looking at um, sense of belonging and trust. Just think what revolution this would be if instead of ticking a box, thinking if the child is meeting the learning goal or working towards it, if you would be thinking about your relationship with the child and the relationship the child has with other children in the environment. Um, please, please give it some thought for the children um, as you come to work with them after Christmas. Christmas time is often time for reflection. And the new EYFS will give us an opportunity to rethink how we work. Um, so please uh, think about that. And But before you run away and before Michelle speaks, we would like to give you a moment of reflection. Please think about what you would like to take to the children tomorrow, next week, maybe in January or in the new year. Maybe you would like to think of the message you will write to a child tomorrow as you are thinking about them. Also think about um, your um, learning journeys which you are 
making in your settings and um, how they could incorporate these learning stories because the learning journeys are kind of hybrid of the learning stories from New Zealand. We just didn't quite get there um, because we have always focused on working towards the early learning goals instead of thinking about getting to know the child and who the child is. And I hand over to Michelle, who uh, is our partner in delivering these webinars and who will also share information from her colleagues. Hi all, um, I'm sorry you're having to hear my voice again today. Um, jo was hoping to be here, who um, manages one of my settings, but unfortunately um, real life got in the way for her tonight. So she has asked me to, um, she's just written a short piece to share some of what she was going to talk about um, tonight. So Jo, um, the reason that this came about is because Jo is from New Zealand and so she had experience um, being on the other side um, of um, learning stories uh, with her son. So I'm just going to read to you what she has written and hopefully you will hear her messages from it, both from a parent's perspective and also from somebody now who is implementing this um, in the UK. So she writes, firstly, as a parent, the power of Dylan's learning story, age three, has stayed with me ever since. He is now 15. The values that were captured and celebrated in it, Dylan, the chef, who gave the others, who gave to others, highlighting the wonderful human attribute of generosity and how that benefited not only his classmates, but his neighbours. They talked to Dylan and they understood his experiences of making biscuits at home and giving them to our neighbours. But that being generous to others had helped society as a whole. This whole wonderful message was written in his learning story and it even went as far to say, and this was when he was, so he's 15 now, this was when he was three. Dylan is starting to work his way towards a being a global citizen of the world. Implementing learning stories at Westwood, so at her nursery. The staff response has been that it makes recording observations more meaningful. By addressing the story to the child, it creates a different kind of narrative that has more heart in it. Staff found teasing out the value of the learning being observed. Staff found teasing out the value of the learning being observed tricky at times. But when we chatted about it in small groups, we ended up with brilliant discussions and all sorts of insights were made between us and with the children, and then later on with the parents. They'd taken about six to eight pictures of each child and have slowly written up long stories with each picture, putting them into sentences of the learning observed and how we can build on this. Other challenges the staff have found is waiting to observe educational moments in the past and then dismissing other types of play. So we're working at really looking at the interests of the child, where they are at at their most engaged and where they really are their free self. How can we capture that? How can we work through that in the setting? Lots of pictures need to be taken, lots of moments of reflection with the child, and then we talk through it. Linking what is seen to a bigger picture of ideas. What skills or ways of working can be developed for adult life? It's tricky for all people, but the ideas are generated through the child and with the help from the child. And then she created a little section saying opportunities. We love how implementing this into our setting has got us all talking together about the children and their learning. People have shown a renewed excitement for working with the children, observing the children and a desire to celebrate the individually of each child. It's got us talking about learning in general, reflecting on how Montessori supports the child and reminding people of those ever important indirect aims. The knock-on effect of this is people are feeling more confident to talk to parents about their children, giving them the language and the confidence of understanding the relevancy of the learning that they've seen, building deeper and more meaningful relationships with parents, understanding their families and what is important to them. So what they've got is a learning story file on the computers and they build the file up of the child. Um, and then, so they start off making notes and then they build it into a narrative as they go through. Um, and then they share them with the parents and then the parents contribute to each story, telling the story back 
to the child. So that's, it's a fairly new thing that we've implemented at Westwood, uh, new for us. Um, I took the decision um, at the beginning of this academic year to no longer do tracking, to no longer do the old way of observing and that we would give ourselves more time to be with the children and give ourselves more time to understand the children. And Joe came to me and said, can we do this? And it's working brilliantly. And I completely agree with what she has said about a renewed vigor within the staff. Um, it's given them a completely new love for what they're doing and why they're working with the children. So I'm really sorry, because Joe was so definitely wanted to talk to her about this tonight, because she's absolutely passionate about it, having experienced it as a person. But maybe we can do that with her another night when she's back with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, it really is about getting to know the child for who the child is, rather than what the child can achieve. And that is a fundamental difference at looking at the children, because we get to know them as a whole person, not as a digit on a statistical data about the learning goals and what the children can achieve. And by getting to know the children, we will be so much more able to provide information and activities for them because we will know them as individuals rather than chasing towards meeting the targets and meeting the developmental goals set out by people who may not know them. And therefore, it is not relevant to many of the children with whom we have worked. Um, of course, I absolutely appreciate that we are challenging you to take on something very different. We are challenging you to consider this a little bit in the whole context of how you work. But perhaps as so many things have changed and as we have learned through the last three months that um, we are celebrating children's learning, particularly as we are looking at what the children are doing outside Maybe this is a good opportunity to really rethink everything else that we do in settings. There have been a couple of questions about how long in giving or implying that this new idea may take so much more time and or we need to allocate more time to doing it. Of course, starting something afresh always takes time. But first of all, remember, that we have been asked to work with the children, to write to the child and create the learning stories with the children. And as you come to look at the children through a different lens, it should actually become much easier. But of course, we will not have the prop of the digital recording systems to which we have all got so used to. And that's perhaps, and, is the challenge for all of us because we will need to think more about what the children are doing and who they really are. Um, I don't know if you want to yeah. add anything. Can I just else? say there, we, um, we found that at, it was a little more time consuming to start because the staff were having to learn more. But as Antonella said in her, um, when she was doing her presentation, it's almost become easier because we've recognized those hundred languages of children more and we're seeing the child through their many different voices and not just seeing them through the eyes of the adult which I think we all fell into that situation and because we're not um, observing the child we are working with the child to create their story it's part of the practice that's going on in the classroom there isn't that need to have time away because you're reflecting with the child and you're reflecting with other people in the classroom. So, um, you know, it does feel, while I was listening to Antonella and, and, and we talk, I was thinking, gosh, we are almost going back to where we were when I started 25 years ago. You know, we're coming back away from all the digital, just ticking boxes and, and, and that. And, and, um, and I think it's, you know, it, it might take time to get the staff to know, but we're needing less time now out of the classroom to do record keeping and to do tracking and things because it's just all being done holistically as part of what we're doing in the classroom. 
That's brilliant. There was a question in the chat about where people could get more information. Are there any books? Margaret Carr and Wendy Lee have written at least a couple of books yeah. about learning stories, which are very accessible. We will put all the information into um, into the um, email as we share the recording with you and as we share the PowerPoint with you. I would like to wish you good preparations for the festive season. As I know from my granddaughter who has started to sing huge amount of Christmas songs that preparations have started. And um, I also um, would like to remind you that we will be back in January but in January, we will um, deliver these sessions on a Tuesday evening, not on a Monday. We will be back on the 12th of January and we will be looking at self-regulation, revisiting Montessori's idea of self-discipline and how it relates to the child's regulation and what we know about brain research in context of self-regulation. So enjoy your festive preparations, enjoy the time um, when you are at home with your families and have time to take a deep breath. And we look forward to seeing you all in January. Thank you very much. And don't forget tomorrow we have got Montessori Europe talking about community, connecting with some of these ideas of the learning stories again from a slightly different perspective. Thank you everybody.